Hi there, first time home buyer. I'm Dr. Emily Roberts of Personal Finance for PhDs. This video is a selection of a longer live Q&A call that I hosted on May 6, 2021. The featured guest is Sam Hogan, a mortgage originator with Prime Lending who specializes in grad students and PhDs, an advertiser with Personal Finance for PhDs, and my brother. The pair of questions that Sam answers in this video were submitted by attendees of the Q&A call and voiced by me. The questions are on whether having three years left on your fellowship offer is required to get a mortgage. Yeah, I think in some of the earlier podcast episodes we did when we were talking about fellowship income, you know, we drew some bright lines like FHA, it's not going to work. VA, it's not going to work. Um, fellowship, less than three years left, not going to work. But you have found that there's actually a little bit more wiggle room in some of those. We haven't necessarily updated everyone yeah. through the podcast, which we will, but so it's, um, it's kind of worth trying. Yeah, the three years especially, um, that's in black and white ink in the guidelines. It's if you don't have three years. But I said, no, 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 we were going to try this. And it was a NSF recipient on a postdoc, two-year contract, and what we actually ended up doing was I had her write a, a short personal statement just saying how qualified she was in her expertise. She was a biologist going to, she was at Pittsburgh University. Um, so she wrote like a little one page explanation about how she's excelled in the field for the last 16 years. She's got all these grants from here and there. That's why she received her PhD. That's why she received the NSF um, career making grant. Um, and so when our underwriter approved that loan with that short letter of explanation, that was a big win for us because we used her successful loan and I actually ended up passing that type of letter of explanation to two other loan officers within my company so that they could have their PhDs approved. And it, it was just, it's fun for me because this loan that I couldn't originate. It was in a uh, Washington state, which my branch is not licensed, but I sent him, I sent the loan officer the application, introduced him to, to Hannah who closed uh, early last month. Emily, that's the, the note I sent you a picture of. She was thankful. So the loan got suspended and I was like, Whoa, that's not supposed to happen. He's like, Hey, you know, what else, what other documentation did you have? I was like, I was like, let me send you this letter. So I sent him the letter. Um, we let Hannah make, you know, write up a similar one and then the underwriter approved the income and she was good to go. This is so, so like thrilling to me yeah, to hear so, about these success stories. Like that's why I'm excited to do the, the VA one, because even when they say no, we don't give up. We're going to push to be like, no, 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 this is a good applicant. Please take a second look you know, it's very reasonable. These people are going to have jobs after they complete their, you know, postdoc. I'm, it's like, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Preaching to the choir here. Um, I have a one-year postdoc contract. If I have a one-year postdoc contract, I cannot use that to start the house buying process. Correct. It has to be three years on the contract. I would say you're good to start looking now. Yeah, maybe we've, I've overcome this challenge before with postdocs. Um, as long as we can show that you have good history and you're an expert in your field and you co you're confident that after this contract ends that, you know, this uh, government agency or, or research institution would hire you at a certain salary. This is all about making the underwriter feel comfortable, right? So yeah, your contract's ending in one year. But after that year, you might be eligible and be a great candidate um, for these other salary positions, which pay much more than this contract, right? So we want to just outline that it is reasonable for your income to continue after the contract's end because you might, you're applying for these other contracts. And if you um, are moving into the desired field that you're an expert in, it, those positions are going to carry salary one, salary two, salary three. So I... I I strongly encourage you to apply for a loan and, and try to become a homeowner because it is possible. Um, and I know when we gave the example earlier of that success with this kind of um, contract, it was at the postdoc level. What mm -hmm. do you think, have you tried it yet at the PhD level with someone on fellowship for less than three years? Yeah, and it's worked. Okay, great.
Good to yeah. know. We will have to update everyone through the podcast on this. If you are a graduate student, postdoc, or PhD, liked this content, and want to ask Sam your own first-time homebuyer questions, please register for our next live Q&A call at pfforphds.com slash mortgage. If you would like to contact Sam directly regarding your own mortgage, you can call or text him at 540-478-5803 or email him at samuel.hogan at primelending.com. Thanks for joining us.